Hello, my name is Mehra Golshan, and I'm Director of Breast Surgical Services at Dana-Farber Brigham and Women's Cancer Center, and today we'll be discussing Amigo, which is the Advanced Multimodality Image Guiding Operating Room Suite at the Brigham and Women's Hospital uh, on a novel breast conserving therapy trial. The whole goal of this trial is to take a woman with a known breast cancer, which is uh, the picture of the breast on MRI on top, and after you remove the tumor is to go to the picture on the bottom, which is the removal of the tumor and a cavity showing that the cancer was fully removed. So why this is important is that worldwide in 2013 there will be a one and a half million cases of breast cancer worldwide. In the United States there will be approximately 220,000 cases of invasive breast cancer. Breast conserving therapy, which is lumpectomy followed by whole breast irradiation, is the preferred method of surgical therapy for most women with early stage breast cancer. The challenge is that most women who undergo breast conserving therapy nearly 40% will have to undergo a re-excision and there is no reliable intraoperative method of de uh, determining what is a clear margin or complete removal of the tumor. What we know is that breast MRI is a very sensitive imaging modality and it's much more sensitive than mammogram or ultrasound and physical exam in determining breast cancer and determining breast tumor size. We have a protocol through the Dana-Farber Harvard Cancer Center 11454, which is a pilot study looking at image-guided breast conserving therapy in the Amigo operative suite at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. So Amigo, or the Advanced Multimodality Image-Guided Operating Suite at the Brigham and Women's Hospital trial is to look at breast conserving therapy and our ability to use intraoperative breast MRI to identify normal versus malignant tissue and to assess our margins intraoperatively. If residual enhancement that is abnormal is identified, extra margins are taken, and our goal is to achieve clear margins. This trial is for women with early stage one or two breast cancer. A breast MRI is performed under general anesthesia. I perform standard breast conserving therapy with lymph node evaluation temporarily close the lumpectomy cavity with saline. We repeat a breast MRI under general anesthesia and then review in real time the margins with our radiologist. Any suspicious or close margins are then re-excised and then the breast is completely closed. Amigo has been very exciting in terms of uh, evaluating a uh, breast tumor in terms of its exact size and its configuration in the breast. This is a diagnostic MRI uh, that's a three Tesla MRI performed in the prone position prior to the surgical procedure. Then we look at enhancement patterns of the tumor and then do volumetric uh, tumor evaluation. Under, on the day of surgery under general anesthesia, a breast MRI with contrast is performed in the supine position. This actually shows now how the tumor displaces when we operate, and this will definitely alter the surgical positioning and targeting at the time of surgery. After the lumpectomy is performed in this patient, again, we temporarily close the cavity and fill it in with saline and then we look around the cavity for areas th that may show enhancement or we suspect residual disease. When a woman is newly diagnosed with breast cancer, an MRI may be performed for what's called extent of disease evaluation to look at the tumor. This MRI is performed with the woman lying on her stomach. However, when a woman is newly diagnosed with breast cancer and a surgical procedure such as lumpectomy is performed, we operate on them lying on their back. As part of the Amigo protocol trial, I will evaluate the woman to see if she is a candidate for the trial. What happens is that she will come into the operating room and undergo general anesthesia. We will perform a contrast enhanced 3T MRI with her lying on her back under general anesthesia. And in this case, 
uh, MRI is performed before and after contrast injection so we can see how the tumor changes in terms of its location, displacement, and size. When a woman lies on her back, the breast displays often to the side, which also changes the positioning of the tumor, which will affect the surgical procedure. Once the intraoperative MRI is performed, we evaluate the images. The MRI machine leaves the operative suite, and then we prepare for the surgery like we would in any other operating room. The woman, again, is supine. I identify and palpate the tumor. I mark off where my incisions will potentially be drawn at the time of surgery. The woman's breast is then prepped and draped in the standard surgical fashion. As part of the lymph node evaluation procedure, I inject uh, marking subareolar. Then I take two cc's of 1% methylene blue diluted with three cc's of injectable saline and I inject this subareolar and then vigorously massage the breast for five minutes to help the blue dye tra uh, travel to the lymphatic space. I mark a curvilinear incision between the pectoralis and the latissimus below the hairline, make an incision, and then we work to identify the blue lymphatic that traces to the blue lymph node or lymph nodes that are the sentinel node or nodes. Our mean or average number of lymph node, sentinel nodes at the Brigham and Women's Hospital is 2.3. These lymph nodes are then removed and sent to permanent pathology for evaluation. The sentinel lymph node procedure is completed. Then there has been time for the breast MRI that was performed intraoperatively to be evaluated by a radiologist. This is brought up to the screens for me to evaluate. And then we approach the tumor. We uh, mark uh, incision along one of Longer's lines and then work on identifying the tumor. I raise flaps superiorly, inferiorly, immediately, laterally. I remove the tumor. I orient it for our pathologist and sent this on to for permanent section. If, uh, if appropriate, and this was a wire localization procedure, intraoperative uh, imaging would be performed. Next, once the lumpectomy is completed, we temporarily close the lumpectomy cavity and the sentinel lymph node cavity. The lumpectomy cavity is closed with a running nylon suture, and then we fill the lumpectomy cavity with saline. The volume of saline that we inject is the exact size of the tumor that was resected, and that is filled into the lumpectomy cavity and secured with a nylon suture. Once this is performed and the closure, temporary closure is done, we cover the incisions, once the incision is temporarily closed, in this animation we perform a second intraoperative breast MRI under general anesthesia with contrast. And the importance of this MRI is to look at the lumpectomy cavity that has now been filled with saline looking for enhancement that is suspicious for residual carcinoma. Once that intraoperative breast MRI is performed, the MRI machine leaves the room, the breast is then reprepped and draped, and our radiologist will then compare the tumor um, that was resected to the second breast MRI, which shows potential areas of what's called residual enhancement or possible cancer that was left behind. Then directed margins are excised and these are sent to pathology for permanent uh, section. These margins that are removed have been correlated with the imaging that has been done. Once hemostasis then is achieved in the breast and in the axilla, um, it's irrigated. I inject also half percent marking for uh, long-term analgesia and then the incisions are closed. So, so far the results of Amigo have been that all patients have undergone successful breast conserving therapy with clear margins. Our patient satisfaction has been remarkably high and this is going to serve as a platform for future studies in terms of intraoperative margin assessment with mass spectroscopy and intraoperative PET probe and PET CT evaluation. 
I'd like to thank you for your time in watching this video. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me at the information at the bottom of this page.